Welcome to the Bible Truth of Our Hymns. We're going to look at a hymn from a hymnal and check it to see if that hymn is biblically sound or not. There are stanzas in the hymns or words that are not correct from the Bible. We need to see that in a church where there are three types of people. Number one, they're saved and serving and loving the Lord. Number two, they're saved and they're worldly. And number three, lastly, they're lost men. Jesus said, every idle word shall man give an account. Are we proposing men and women in the church to sin by the hymns that are chosen? We will examine some, but not all, in this study. We will set a groundwork that the sin, that the sin, the hymn that we missed, you can be able to check for yourself and study yourself to see, is this hymn that I like correct? Now, not all the hymns that we're going to look at will be wrong. Many will be great and wonderful hymns. And a few will have to be, is it really proper? Will it glorify God or will it cause a man to sin? The biblical truth of our hymns today, O oh God, our help in ages past, by Isaac Watts. Isaac Watts was an English Christian minister, hymn writer, theologian, and truth seeker. He was a, it was a production and popular hymn writer, and credit with some 750 hymns. He is recognized as the father of English comedy. Many of his hymns remain in use today and have been translated into numerous languages. Isaac once once complained about him singing in a church, to see the dull indifference, the careless and thoughtless air that sits upon the faces of a whole assembly while the psalm is upon their lips, might even tempt a charitable observer to suspect the fervency of their inward religion. And that's pretty good because I'm doing this study about our hymns to show you that, you know what, some of our hymns are unscriptural. Some of our hymns are not to be sung by all. In 1702, he became pastor of London's Mark Lane Independent i.e. Congregational Chapel, then one of the city's most important independent churches. The hymn was originally part of the Psalm of David in the language of the New Testament, published by Watts in 1719. In this book, he paraphrased in Christian verse the entire hymnal with the exception of 12 psalms, which he felt was unsuited for Christian usage. O oh God is a phrase and dear help outcry protector past and present and future what respect and honor does this hymn give god god is god even before creation now we look at this hymn oh god our help in ages past god is past god has always been god i mean before adam as far as mankind our hope for years to come future our shelter from the stormy blast and storms will come many a time in our life troubles yea they that live godly shall in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution even lost people have troubles and problems this earth is a veil of tears and our eternal home my eternal home is New Jerusalem I am just a wanderer a sojourner a pilgrim in this planet called earth Under the shadow of thy throne, the saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is thy arm alone, and our defense is sure. We're going to win. This battle that we have, the armor that God's given us, according to what the Bible says, we will win. 
Before the hills in order stood, or earth receive her frame. From everlasting thou art God, to endless years the same. Now, if you are any kind of public evangelist working and dealing with people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're going to come with masses of people who say, well, how do you know God exists? Prove to me God. Show to me the existence of God. Prove to me. And yet the Bible, 66 books, many authors, do not spend one time by the Holy Spirit to prove the existence of God. The Bible, the 66 books of the King James 1611, takes the existence of God for granted. He's there. In the beginning, God. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Begins with God, ends with God. Always with God. And those that are saved have tasted, have the indwelling Holy Spirit in our hearts. And that when we love the Lord, we will do His words. And we will know of God what is right and what is man. A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening God. Imagine God, as far as the realm of man. Six thousand years of man from Adam to the baby that was just born. To the man that just died. At the moment you're listening. At the moment I'm doing this right now. All the lies, either they obey God or they disobey God. God has seen every single human, every one of us from Adam to today, and including the animals. How many eggs are hatched inside of a nest, and yet at the sparrow's funeral, God will attend. God will meet the needs of a lion that is hungry, the Bible records. And, I don't know exactly, 6,000 years, and to God it's 1,000 years. That's nothing to God. It's but one day. And a day has a thousand years. Time like an ever rolling stream. This goes. You know you can die today. Life is going to go on. Until the world and the earth are folded up. Burnt with a fervent heat. And yet there's eternal life. In actuality when you look at what it is. There really is no death as a Christian you're absent from the body and present with the Lord boom Luke tells us as far as that rich man he died and boom he's in hell death is a very point of our life that can't be recorded I don't think it's brief it takes us to God or it takes us to hell. And yet there's life. Time rolls on. Bears all its sons away. People will die. Short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. Sun's going to come up tomorrow morning. If I were to die today, the sun's coming up tomorrow. But yet not always. Tribulation period says that sun's not going to rise. It's not going to give its light. The moon is going to withdraw of her shining. The stars are not going to twinkle. But as far as life itself. Take in your state or country. However your country is divided. Like Canada is, is divided into provinces. And. I don't know what, you know, like Germany, I don't know what Germany is divided to, but the United States of America is divided into 50 states. Canada is divided into provinces, I think six or seven, I could be wrong. And take what your region, your, your states, your county, your city, town, how many graveyards are there? Burial places, cemeteries. And how many are in those ground reserved for dead people? 
a lot. And then there are there are places where there are no markers. There have been battles upon this world, this earth, where the body is just placed in a big hole and buried. The wages of sin is death. It happens. But we have a God that loves us. We have a holy, true God. Not everybody's going to go to heaven. Not everybody's going to go to hell either. A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone. Now, I got to disagree here. I don't care if it's called paraphrasing or not. When you're going to quote the Bible, you better quote the Bible correctly because if you don't quote the Bible correctly, it's a misquote. Psalms 90 verse 4 in the King James Bible, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. It's called paraphrasing. And yet the scripture does say what is not said here. Why couldn't Isaac Watts, who's probably much better than I am, why couldn't he just go with what the Bible said? You know what I mean? Why couldn't he? A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone. Short as the watch ends the night before the rising sun. Time like an ever rolling stream. I think I may have got messed up in the standards here. All its suns away. They fly. Forgotten. As a dream dies at the opening day. Our God, our help in ages past, will hope for years to come. Be thou our guide while life shall last and our eternal home. Now, and God, our help in ages past. This hymn, great, great hymn, except for that, that misquote of, of Psalms in the King James Bible. It takes God who has been past to God that is future and it brings God to our present life while we are living. While we are being born and until we die, we need God our help today. He helped us yesterday. He's prepared for tomorrow, but there are troubles and problems today. There is a born-again, Bible-believing Christian today that is suffering. There is a Christian who is saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, and they are wanting today. And Isaac Watts calls upon that one God, the only God, God who is Jesus. Jesus is God to able to save. This hymn praises God. It glorifies God who he is, the God of the past, the God of the present, and the God of the future. As far as back as Adam to the last man. God is long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. He will save any soul that comes to Jesus Christ and say, save me, wash me. I repent of my sins and God will never turn any person down of that. And ask, seek, knock, call upon me, seek me. And if it's well for our being, God will not say no. And there are Christians who do not call upon God. They're, they're so, oh, I'm not going to burden God. I'm not going to ask of God. Ask Him. Taste of the Lord and see how good He is. 